activity. Receivable turnover, here we go, accounts receivable turnover, mm-hmm, measures liquidity of receivables. Inventory measures liquidity of inventory because it tells me are these receivables liquid? Will they going to turn into receivables, cash? Inventory turnover. Will the inventory turn into a sale? Because it's not obsolete. Asset turnover, net sales over average total assets measures how efficiently assets are used to generate sales. Uh, number of days supply and average inventory. Excuse me, 360 over inventory turnover. So this is important, number of days supply in average inventory and number of days sales in average receivables. So if we were to come back here and let's say our AR turnover and what we said was it is credit sales over average AR. Now what did that equal? 6.0. That tells me receivables turn over six times a year or 360 over six is 60 days. It tells us they turn over about every 60 days. And you can do the same thing for both receivables and inventory. Inventory turns over, same thing. That means if inventory is over 60 days old. And we did that in our head. We said, if it turns over six times a year, six times a year means every two months. Two months is 60 days. But the way to calculate it is just 360 over this gives you number of days. So what do they define that as? They define that as number of days supply in inventory measures the number of days required to sell inventory. Receivables measures number of days required to collect receivables. Profitability. Profit margin on sales also called your gross margin. Your gross margin, that is net income over net sales measures net income generated by each dollar of sale. So what is the income net over sales? Uh, another one, uh, rate of return on assets measures overall profitability. Rate of return on common stock measures profitability of owner's investment. EPS, earnings per share, we'll talk a lot about. We'll have to calculate simple and diluted. We'll calculate those in financial accounting. Measures net income earned on each share of common stock. It doesn't mean how much money you're actually going to earn. It's not your dividend. Earnings per share just says how much per share will each person, did each person, would each person have earned based on the company's earnings. It doesn't mean how much you're getting as a dividend. But again, we'll do those calculations in the financial accounting exam, <clears throat> but that's important because most people think earnings per share means how much you're getting as a dividend. It's not. Uh, price earnings, market price over EPS measures the ratio of the market price per share to earnings per share. Uh, payout ratio measures percentage of earnings distributed in the form of dividends. That's payout. Other ratios coverage, debt to equity, shows creditors the corporation's ability to sustain losses because it's your total debt over your stockholder's equity. Uh, debt to total assets measures the percentage of total assets provided by creditors. Times interest earned measures the ability to meet interest payments as they come due. Cash debt to coverage measures the ability to repay its total liabilities. And book value per share measures the amount each share would receive if the company were liquidated at the amounts reported on the balance sheet. So it's basically your common stockholders equity over the common shares outstanding. That's called your book value per share or book value per common. Because we have book value per common, that's after the preferred get paid out. Again, we'll talk more about that in where? In your financial accounting exam, which I know you just can't wait for because it gets better and better. What is this talking about? Analytical procedures. So what does that mean again? What it says is to keep it in perspective, these are the audit procedures, these are the substantive tests. We've talked about I Korea, there's your A. Analytical procedures, study of data comparisons and relationships. This is one of your different tests. You've got test of details of accounts, transactions, balances, and disclosures, and analytical procedures, study of data comparisons and relationships. It's important that you understand all of these. It's important that you also see how they all tie together, which we'll talk about in just a moment.